Lando Falcon, reporting live here at PAX East 2011. And I'm here with the legendary Bill Amend hey. of the classic comic strip Foxtrot. One of my favorites since I was little. I used to go to the library all the time. You make me feel really old. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, sir. Well, you know, you, you, you carry it well. <laughs> what made you first get into cartooning? Boy, uh, lack of other career options. I, uh, <laughs> I have a degree in physics, so I, I uh, wasn't sure whether I should go to grad school and pursue science um, or do maybe computer programming. Um, but I'd always enjoyed drawing cartoons when I was a kid. Uh, I did cartoons for the school paper. And I thought, well, um, why don't I try a comic strip just because it looks like it'd be fun to do. Um, the odds are stacked against me, but at least I'll give it a shot. And so I. You know, I was 22, I sent off a month's worth of strips and got rejected by everybody. Tried again, um, my second strip was Foxtrot, and after about two years of polite rejection letters, um, suddenly Universal Press Syndicate said, hey, we think there's something there, and let's talk, and knock on wood, you know, <laughs> it'll continue. Uh, it's smart but, of them. Yeah, so that was, you know, that was in 80, 88 the strip launched, so I've been doing it 20 Coming up on 23 years now. Wow. What do you get your inspiration from for this trip? The different stuff you do? Coffee, uh, Deadline Panic. <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I, I probably do what, what anybody would do. I, I, I web surf a lot. I read, you know, read what I can, try to keep, keep somewhat in tune with, with what's going on in the culture. Um, and when, when it's time to write a strip, just brainstorm, doodle, and, and, and nine times out of ten, my first ideas are horrible, but I, I massage them enough that they become okay, and then and then I cross my fingers that somehow while I'm drawing them, I'll figure out a way to make them better than okay. And some weeks that works, some weeks it doesn't. Well, I've always liked it. Yeah. Um, well, do, do you, are the characters based off of anyone you know personally, or is all the imagination? No, I mean... I mean, when I first, first, first started the strip, um, I probably was modeling them a little bit on my own family from my childhood because I was I was fresh out of college and still thinking like a kid. Um, so Paige was a little bit like my sister, and, and um, Peter was a little bit like me. I was an older brother. Um, but o over the years, um, more and more the characters are, are just representative of me in different ways. Um, so you know my sensible side comes through in the mom, uh, my mischievous, geeky side comes through with Jason. Um, so is my favorite. Yeah, so, so, you know, I, I see a lot of myself in the strip. I don't see so much of real people anymore. So, you mentioned you have a degree in physics. Yeah. I, myself, am pursuing a degree in mathematics. And I thought about physics as well. Um, and, as you mentioned yourself, uh, the, the ship definitely has a geeky, nerdy slant to it, uh, especially in the form of Jason, who's my favorite character. So, uh, would you say that your your degree has certainly influenced your strip in many ways, and is there is there a particular way that you specifically tried to make it geeky or something like that? Well, I recognize that, that you know I, I know most of the the other newspaper cartoonists personally, and, and many of them come from art backgrounds and writing backgrounds and all, and so I, I do recognize that coming from a unique background gives me an advantage if I want to write about that stuff. And so, so I, I try to write about things that I know nobody else will be writing about. Um, I like that I'm doing math jokes and science jokes and computer jokes in the funny pages because you don't see a lot of that in the funny pages. And, and, and I think there's a lot of humor there and I, you, know, you see it all the time in the web, um, but you don't see it so much in print. And, and um, so I, I like being an ambassador for that sort of yeah. geeky, techy stuff um, as much as I can. Um, with every passing year, my physics and math knowledge diminishes a little bit, you know? And, and <laughs> so, you know, I, I get a little scared because my, my editor at the syndicate's great at checking my spelling and grammar. He's not so great at checking my math. Yeah. So, you know, every now and then there'll be a, a screw up and I'll get 100 emails and, uh, you know, hey, hey knucklehead. You, you got the law of cosines wrong or something. <laughs> well, I definitely think it's it's cool how you you like you said you are introducing that into uh, an otherwise math-free zone. 
a geeky free zone, you know, as, as the funnies, you know. And I think it's important that we show how, you know, that so many people they're like, oh, math, you know, you know, my bane and and everything. And you're you're kind of, in a way you're making it less taboo, I guess you could say, yeah. more more cool, more funny, you know, showing that you know this isn't something to be afraid of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's more it's well, yeah, it's so weird how you know we take kids in elementary school and. and Teach them math. Math's important. Junior high, math's important. High school, math's important. And all of a sudden, as adults, for whatever reason in our culture, math disappears. Mm -hmm. You never see it, and and it just strikes me as odd. Yeah. The, the if math's so important that we teach it to everybody. Why are we hiding from it in our pop culture? Um, you know, newspapers have very few science stories. Uh, so, you know, yes. I don't. I don't. I don't subscribe to that, so so I'm happy to write about math when I think of a good joke. I don't do math just to do math. I, I try to write solid jokes. Yeah. So. And, uh, I, I'd say you accomplished. Yeah, and I, I have to be somewhat careful when I do the geeky, geeky or the the science stuff, um, not to do it too often because I do recognize that if I do a joke about calculus, that 90% of the readers may not get the joke, and and you know I do. <laughs> I, I do, you know, have have to put food on the table, and so I, I can't I can't risk, you know, having every paper cancel me just because I'm too obscure. Can't alienate um, the low brows. Yeah, but but once in a while, I think it's it's fun to do a strip for for a more narrow segment of the audience. Yes. Well, I think that's, uh, that's very brave. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Great to meet you.